In the previous class, uh, we, are studied, uh, we are studying about the unit four, animal organization. So in this animal organization, uh, we studied about the tissues and the type study of the earthworm. Now today we are in this class, we are going to study about the one more uh, in a type study under the invertebrates and that is the cockroach. Now uh, the scientific name of the cockroach that we are going to study about is the Periplaneta americana and it belongs to the phylum Arthropoda and the class Insecta and the subclass Pterygotan. Yeah, cockroaches uh, are the, the coming to the it's the colors and all these cockroaches actually appear as the brown or black bodies animals and also they do appear in the different colors and like they appear in yellow or red in color or the dark colors and they are also been uh, reported in the present in the tropical regions and so their size actually ranges from the one fourth inches to the three inches or else the 0.6 to the 7.6 centimeters and and have long provided with a long antenna and the legs are also present flat actions of the upper body wall that conceals the head now cockroaches uh, actually get lives in case of the damp places and, and throughout the world and, and uh, they have become the residents in case of the human habitats and they also are uh, serious vectors and also responsible for the spreading of the various kinds of uh, diseases and, and these uh, cockroaches prefer to live in case of the damp and as well as the warm places like the sea waste pipes present in case of the also present uh, available in case of the kitchens, bakeries, restaurants and the uh, warehouses, groceries in all these places they are usually available and, and they are cockroaches are usually nocturnal and they usually come out only during the night time and become active during the night time and hide in the narrow creeks or crevices uh, during the whole uh, day. And, Whereas the cockroaches are cursorial and they fastly uh, move on the surface of the uh, land and so in that way they are cursorial and these cockroaches very oftenly fly and uh, the very rarely they used to fly and, and uh, they are omnivorous uh, in nature and that means they feed on all the kinds of substances and, and they are also uh, scavengers and uh, so which uh, actually feed on the dead decaying organic matter and all the kinds of food substances whether it is a plant or animal what any kind of the material usually they comes to the uh, feeds on all the kinds and coming to the it's the external morphological uh, features and uh, like if you look at the uh, diagram ones uh, it is provided with, uh, pro coming to the in the external morphological characters we are mainly uh, concerned about its sizes shapes and the colors and so cockroaches, the adult frog usually measures about 34 to the 53 uh, millimeters in length, uh, whereas the uh, uh, females are little bit smaller than the males. And so the wings are usually in case of the uh, male frog, the wings are usually extend beyond the abdomen in case of the male uh, in case of the male. And where, uh, whereas in case of the female uh, female cockroach, they are almost up to the equal to the uh, length. And, and the coming to the uh, shape of the body, and they are elongated and uh, elliptical uh, and also the body is dorsoventrally uh, flattened and, and uh, as the flat body enables the cockroach uh, make them to get uh, hide inside the crevices and uh, the, in the narrow crevices and coming to the uh, color uh, the color of the body is honey colored and usually and or it's it's a reddish brown in color except a pale brown or yellowish uh, color and that is actually a uh, scene uh, it's a pronotal plate and are along the edge of the along the edge of this pronotal plate usually you'll find the slight yellowish color is also visible and in case of that a pronotal plate and uh, when it comes to this uh, uh, color of the body and, and the whole body is actually get surrounded by the exoskeletal structure and so the entire the body of the cockroach is uh, surrounded by a, an exoskeleton and this uh, exoskeleton it's a hard and the brown chitinous in nature made up of the chitin especially and, and this exoskeleton is totally get hardened and, and the present in the form of sclerites and those hard sclerites are called uh, those uh, hardened chitinous plate like structures are uh, call them as sclerites and like this the whole body is get provided with plate like structures and these plate like structures are called as as uh, the sclerites and like this in case of the cockroach the plate like structures are present all over the body and so this actually forms the exoskeleton and now uh, in case uh, uh, this exoskeleton uh, is hardened typically each body segment has got four sclerites are present and if you take the one segment actually and in case of the cockroach and this uh, one segment is covered by means of the four sclerites are present and like this and 
So one is present on the dorsal side, another one is present on the ventral side and the two plates are actually present on the lateral sides. And like that the each segment is covered by the four sclerites are present. And dorsal sclerite we call it as the tergal, tergamon. The dorsal sclerite is called tergum and the ventral sclerite is called the sternamon. Whereas the lateral two sclerites are present which are called pleuron are pleurites and so in that way each segment is actually uh, surrounded by the four sclerites are a uh, present and now the sclerites are get joined with each other and if you take in case of the body of the cockroach like this the sclerites are present and all these sclerites are joined by a flexible uh, membrane is present and in between these uh, sclerites and so like this a, a, a flexible membrane that present in between these sclerites and so this uh, a thin flexible soft membrane and that is present in between these sclerites and is called arthroidal membrane and arthroidal membrane so uh, which connects the uh, two sclerites in case of the body and so this forms actually the uh, exoskeleton of the cockroach and that is the sclerites and the in between the sclerites arthroidal membrane and Coming to the uh, body uh, divisions and which are present in case of the cockroach. And so the body is actually the segmented in nature which is uh, di divisible into the three parts and, and the each functional division of the body we call it as tagmaton. So there are the three uh, functional divisions are present or the three tagmata are present. They are head and the thorax and the abdomen. First tagmata, second tagmata and the third tagmaton. Coming to the first tagmata that is the head. And so the head is formed actually uh, the number of the segment that actually uh, combined or fuses in the embryonic stage to form into the head are six uh, segments and so six embryonic segments constitute to form into the head and so the head of the cockroach it is usually the uh, when you look at the head of the cockroach it is usually pear shaped or triangular in, in shape and uh, the head of the cockroach and and uh, it is roughly a triangular in shape anteriorly and the position of the head in case of the cockroach and if you look at the position uh, how it is actually positioned this is the head and uh, this is the thorax and this is the abdomen so uh, the head is actually po positioned right angles to the uh, body and so it is totally placed right angles to the uh, body so the because of that one the head of the cockroach is called hyponathus head and so in case of this hyponathus as these mouth parts are directed toward directed downwards and in case of the cockroach and as the mouth parts are directed downwards, so the head of the cockroach is described as hyponathus head. And, uh, the head is actually regarded as the hyponathus and uh, the, the, this we described as that they are directed towards the downwards. And. The head is uh, highly mobile and it's, it's a freely movable and because as it is get attached to the uh, mobile and as it is get attached to the a flexible neck is present in between this head and the thorax that makes the head to get a freely movable in almost all the directions and so this is about the head and coming to that head is actually surrounded by the uh, surrounded by the six clearites are present so all the six clearites that covering the head and to constitute to form the head capsule and so uh, the head capsule actually made up of the six clearites are present and and those six clearites of the uh, th six clearites constitute to form the head capsule in among them the first one is at the top of the head you have got at the top of the head you have got the two sclerites are present they are called epicranial plates and so at this region there are the two epicranial plates are present and, and these two epicranial plates constitute to uh, uh, form at the top of the head and now coming to the in front of the head there is an another large sclerite is present which is called as fronts and, and the below the fronts there is a rectangular sclerite is present uh, uh, re rectangular sclerite is present which is called as clypeus and, and there is an another sclerite attached to the clypeus that is the uh, a mobile attached which is the labrum and, and on the lateral sides you have got a pair of sclerites or two small sclerites are present which are called xenon so uh, we have got uh, the epicranial plates like this the epicranial plates are present and the endoscleroid we call it as fronds and the endoscleroid that we call it as the clypeus rectangular scleroid called clypeus 
and mobile get attached to this one called the labrum and the, a pair of the genae are also a present so like this the genae are two a labrum one clypeus one frons one and, and these epicranial plates are actually two but they are fused together and result in the formation of a one scleroid that is called a, a vertex and so like this uh, there are totally six scleroids are present and, and all these six scleroids constitute to form the the whole the head capsule and now the head actually bears a pair of the kidney shaped uh, structures and which are called the compound eyes which are present on the uh, dorso lateral sides of the head capsule and uh, there the co two compound eyes are present in case of the cockroach and, and uh, also provide with a pair of antennae and these pair of the antennae are located inside the two antennary sockets and, and they are located inside this antennary uh, sockets and and at the base of the each antenna you will have the two small white spots are present and they are called simple eyes or fenestrae or oscillion singular we call it as oscillus which are present at the base of this each antenna so uh, all these structures and uh, this also called as simple eyes and all these structures and antennae compound eyes oscilli all these structures and uh, constitute to form the uh, head capsule and now in addition to that the head is also provided with a several number of appendages are also attached to the head and so the they are called cephalic appendages and so there are the totally six segments are present in the cock, uh, head of the cockroach and uh, one two three four five six and all these six segments are provided with a uh, 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 appendages they are called cephalic appendages and in this the first and the third are without any cephalic appendages and so the second fourth fifth sixth segments are provided with the uh, cephalic appendages so the appendages of the first uh, second segment of the head and they are called antennae so antennae are regarded as the uh, cephalic appendages of the second uh, head segment and, and the fourth one uh, constitutes the mandibles and the uh, cephalic appendages of the fifth segment are the first pair of the maxillae and the sixth one uh, we call it as a labium and are the second pair of maxillae like this these are the four different types uh, which are constituted to form the cephalic appendages and so antennae are long they arise from the membranous sockets and that are attached to the head capsule and, and that lie in front of the eyes and and uh, they can be uh, made to move almost in all the uh, directions and, and these antennae are provided with the olfactory sensilla and also the tactile sensilla are also present and, and the appendages of the fourth segment are the mandibles and, and these mandibles helps in cutting off the uh, or the biting of cutting of the food metals actually and, and whereas the appendages of the fifth are the first maxillae appendages of the sixth are second pair of maxillae are constituted to, together constitute to form the uh, labium and now uh, along all these and uh, appendages and among these the mandibles first maxillae labium they actually constitute the components of the mouth parts and now coming to the mouth parts in case uh, mouth parts of the cockroach and uh, the kind of the mouth parts that are present in case of the cockroach they are called biting and chewing type of the mouth parts and biting and chewing type of the mouth parts are present and the lower head of the uh, at the lower end of the head region you have all the mouth parts are present and they are directed towards uh, downwards and because of that uh, because of that mode of their direction uh, towards the downwards these mouth parts are called hypo the, the head is actually called as hyponathus head and, and in this uh, the number of the mouth parts which are present are the labrum and the a pair of mandibles hypopharynx second pair of maxillae that is called the labium and the first pair of the maxillae all these constitute to form the uh, mouth parts in case of the cockroach and so these these in this the mandibles are the main structures and that helps in the biting and and uh, along with that remaining all the other uh, uh, mouth parts also helps in the chewing and also the holding of the food materials and prevent from the falling of the food metals like that every uh, are the holding of the food substance every mouth part has got the specific function so which all helps in uh, in biting chewing and 
So that's why uh, these are the uh, biting and chewing type of the mouth parts and very uh, primitive type of the uh, mouth parts are present in case of the cockroach. And among them, uh, the hypopharynx and a flexible uh, tongue is also present and that helps in thoroughly the mixing of the food and uh, with the saliva. And. So these are the uh, uh, simple uh, mouth parts and that are present in case of the cockroach. Let's move on to the uh, second tag meter of the body and which is called the thorax and the second tag meter of the uh, body is called the thorax. The thorax is actually uh, made up of three uh, segments and the three segments that are present in case of the cockroach are the uh, of the thorax of the cockroach are they are called prothorax, mesothorax and the uh, metathorax and the three uh, are present and now uh, the head is actually get movable and it is actually freely movable in all the directions with the help of a small flexible a, a flexible structure called neck and with which the uh, head is actually get attached to the thoracic region and the neck is actually regarded as an, a short extension of that neck and so this short extension of that prothorax and that actually forms into the uh, neck region and, and now the exoskeleton of the uh, exoskeleton of the thorax consists of the thoracic segments and like each thorax as we discussed earlier and it is provided with the dorsal tergum, ventral sternum and also on the lateral sides pleurites are also present. And, but the pronotal plate it is actually the very uh, large plate that is actually present in case of the cockroach. And. So pronotum and it is a present uh, on the dorsal surface of the prothoracic region. And. So this entire the prothorax is actually surrounded by uh, the large sclerite called uh, the uh, large sclerite called pronotum and like that followed by a mesonotum is present and the metanotum is present and but out of all that uh, plates and uh, sclerites that are present in the entire the body of the cockroach uh, the uh, body of the cockroach pronotum is actually the largest sclerite that is present in the head of the uh, thorax of the cockroach and or in the body of the cockroach and then coming to this uh, 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 appendages of the thorax and the thorax is uh, provided with the uh, uh, two different types of the appendages and one is the legs and another one is the wings and coming first to the legs and there are the three pairs of legs are present in case of the cockroach and those three pairs each pair is actually attached to the uh, each one segment of the thorax and the first pair of legs are attached to the prothorax second pair are attached to the mesothorax and third pair attached to the metathorax and, and all these uh, thoracic segments are structurally similar and, and each walking uh, uh, all are similar in their structure and actually each uh, th uh, segment of the cockroach uh, thoracic leg of the cockroach is actually provided with they are provided with uh, five segments are present segments of the leg are called the podomias and among them the first one we call it as the coxa and the second one we call as, as, as very smallest one called trochanter and uh, the third one it is a long and the strongest part of that the segment and which is called the femur and the femur is get attached to the another thin long uh, podomia called tibia and the remaining uh, last podomia and which is actually provided with 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 and 5 and So uh, the last podomere is called tarsus. So like this, the cockroach is actually provided with the five podomeres are present. They are called coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. And the tarsus is get provided with the five uh, segments are present in that they are called tarsomeres. So they are the, about the five tarsomeres are actually present in the leg of the cockroach. And there are uh, five joints are actually present and one, two, three, four, five joints are actually present and at this, it, towards the inner side of the each joint you have got the soft uh, uh, cushion pad like structure is actually present and these soft cushion pad like structures are called plantulean. Very soft uh, cushion pad like structures are present, they are called plantulean which helps in uh, uh, locomotion on the smooth surfaces. And 
whereas at the terminal joint of the tarsus which is called the pretarsus it is also provided with a, a soft cushion pad like structure at the end which is called aroleum and on either side of this a pair of claws are also present and and these uh, a pair of the claws are present and this aroleum and the claws also helps in uh, showing the locomotion on the rough surfaces and so this is about the leg of the cockroach and coming to the uh, wing of the cockroach and there are the two pairs of the wings are present in case of the cockroach and and they are called the four wings and the uh, second pair of the wings are called the hind wings and so four wings and hind wings are the first pair of wings and second pair of the wings and so wings are they are the flap like cuticular extensions of the uh, body and uh, they are actually the uh, formed from the cuticular extensions of the body and which are also flap like and and they are also supported by uh, sclerotinized several number of network of small tubular structures and so these sclerotinized uh, tubular structures and uh, sclerotinized tubular structures that give support and they are called veins and are nervures and veins are nervures and that are the, the, the sclerotinized tubules that give uh, the support to these uh, wings are called in. Now the four wings are uh, present on the dorsolateral sides of the mesothorax and the uh, hind wings are attached at the dorsolateral sides of the metathorax and so mesothoracic and metathoracic wings and coming to the four wings and four wings are thick and they, they are thick they are opaque and they are uh, thick opaque and they are also leathery and uh, leathery in nature and, and they are responsible for the uh, mainly to cover the hind wings and when the cockroach is not flying and so they are actually the protective covering of the second pair of the wings and whereas the hind wings are they are very broad and folded they are broad and also the folded and and they are transparent and uh, so they are broad transparent and the folded uh, structures and especially these are the uh, second pair of the wings which are useful for the flight and so uh, while resting uh, the second pair of the wings are uh, uh, actually get covered by this first pair of the uh, wings and so uh, under this under the below the first pair of the wings and as they are responsible for the giving the protection to the second pair of the wings when the cockroach is not flying and that's why the first pair of the wings are also called as tegmina tegmina means wing covering which are actually responsible for the giving the protection to the uh, first pair of the wings and so these are the legs and the wings are the uh, appendages of the thoracic region and coming to the third tag tagmata of the cockroach and the third tagmata of the cockroach is the abdomen and so abdomen is also called the third tagmata it is the posterior region of the body and and it has got it is a uh, it's actually compared to that of the thorax and uh, compared to that of the thorax it is very broader and uh, it's uh, it's very broader uh, than the thorax and the dorso ventrally flattened and and the abdomen of the adult and uh, abdomen of the adult is actually provided with the 10 segments are present and whereas uh, in the embryonic stage the abdomen is actually uh, made up of 11 segments whereas in the adults uh, the 11 segment is lost and the only the 10 are present and now uh, all the segments and which are present in the abdominal region on all the four sides provided with the dorsally tergal plate ventrally sternal plate and two lateral pleura except in case of the 10th segment and in case of the 10th segment the dorsal tergal plate is broader extend beyond the body and it is notched and at the center and almost it is bifurcated and it is bifurcated notched at the center and extended beyond the abdomen and that is the uh, dorsal 10th uh, tergal plate and present on the dorsal side and coming to the ventral side 10th sternum is absent and whereas uh, interestingly in case of the female cockroach and in case of the female cockroach the 7th 8th and 9th and so the entire the 7th 8th 9th they its results in the formation of the brood pouch and so which forms the floor which forms the anterior part and which are uh, ninth actually forms the roof and in that way uh, the all the four sides are actually 
formed by this uh, 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 dorsally, anteriorly and laterally and the roof and of this brood pouch are formed by these three sclerites and seventh, eighth and ninth and also called the genital pouch and, and in this genital pouch the anterior end of this genital pouch and it is provided with the uh, female uh, gonopore is present and also the it, it's, it has got the spermatical uh, opening is also present and uh, the collateral glands also get opens over in this region and so collateral glands openings are also seen and so so female genital pore and uh, uh, spermatical pore collateral glands and all they are actually get opens at the anterior part of this brood pouch and in case of the male at the posterior end the genital pouch is actually present at the end of the abdomen and, and which is also uh, dorsally and ventrally uh, formed by this sclerites and so dorsally the uh, brood pouch is actually formed by uh, the dorsally the brood pouch has got ninth and the tenth tergal plates are formed whereas the ventrally anyway tenth tergal plate is absent so on the ventral side on the ventral side ninth sterna is are uh, the sternum and actually forms the uh, lower part and so uh, this entire this brood pouch and which whatever it is present and it is provided with the on the dorsal side it has opens into the anus is present and also the uh, uh, on the ventral side it is provided with the genital pouches are present and also the several number of the gonopophysis are also present and so uh, in case of the male the uh, in case of the male and the genital pouch receives the anus and the male genital aperture and also provide with the chitinous plate like structures and which acts as a copulatory uh, structures and they are called gonopophysis and in addition to all uh, the male cockroach it is also uh, provided with a pair of the anal uh, a, 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 especially in case of the male cockroach and if you look at the uh, male cockroach the uh, it is uh, provided with a pair of the anal styles are also a uh, present and th th this is only in case of male cockroach and so in case of the male cockroach a pair of anal styles are present and uh, a bear a short thread like spiny structures are present which are called uh, anal styles and, and these anal styles are actually absent in case of the female cockroach and so by which you can able to distinguish the uh, male cockroach from the female cockroach by presence of these anal styles and whereas in both the uh, in both the sexes and the 10th segment actually bears a pair of the uh, 15 segmented structures are present and and those are the uh, uh, filamentous segmented structures are present in both the sexes they are called anal cerci so anal cerci are present in the both end but whereas anal styles are present only in case of the male cockroach and, and at the end of the abdomen below the 10th tergal plate uh, at the end of the abdomen you have got the anus is actually present and another one is the abdomen uh, in case of the fifth and the sixth segments and uh, of the abdominal tergal plates and fifth and sixth tergan fifth and sixth terga of the abdomen are provided with the stink glands are present and which gives the a characteristic order uh, to this uh, cockroaches and wherever they are present they actually gives the characteristic order uh, comes out and it is due to the presence of these stink glands in case of the fifth and the sixth abdominal tergan so th these are all the uh, some of the appendages uh, uh, of the abdominal region and coming to the anatomical aspects and it's the physiological aspects and in this the first one is actually the body wall and the body wall of the cockroach is entirely covered by the chitinous uh, cuticle and so whatever the chitinous cuticle and that is present all over the body and this chitinous cuticle actually forms as the uh, exoskeleton and that also responsible for forming as an exoskeleton and, and this chitinous exoskeleton prevents the loss of the water from the body and it is also uh, secreted by the underlying epidermis and if you take the body wall of cockroach there are especially the three layers are present and the outer uh, cuticle and underneath that one the epidermis is present and below that one you have got the basement membrane and so these three uh, layers and actually constitute to form the body wall in case of the cockroach a, 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 in turn the cuticle again uh, 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 forms into the three different layers and epicuticle exocuticle and endocuticle like that the three layers are present and 
Not only that, the cuticle is also the, uh, the cuticle under, undergoes the invaginations and, and that results the invaginations of this sclerotinized cuticle and, and uh, that the invagination of this sclerotinized cuticle we call it as apodemes and, and these apodemes are actually uh, forms the surface for the attachment of the muscles inside the body. So it is also regarded as the endoskeleton of the cockroach. And the same these invaginations which are present in the head of the cockroach and forms into a small ring like structure giving the protection to the brain and it is called as tentorium. And so the endoskeleton of the head giving the protection to the brain is called tentorium and the invaginations that are present in case of the thoracic and the abdominal region of the sclerotinized cuticle they are called apodemes and which actually forms the surface for the attachment of this muscle sun. So uh, and below that one epidermis the glands present inside this epidermis. Epidermis is a, a columnar epithelial layer and some of them are cells are modified into the glands they secretes the uh, cuticle and, and these cells rest upon the uh, basement membrane. And. So these three layers constitute to form the uh, body wall and coming to the uh, body cavity and so as you know that the space present between the elementary canal and the body wall is called the body cavity and and in case of the cockroach a true body cavity is present uh, but which is restricted around the gonads only and, and that body cavity is we call it as schizocelom and whereas whatever the rest of the body cavity and that is what we call it as perivisceral cavity which is present all around the uh, body and it is actually called hemocele and uh, which is filled with the hemolymph and, and all the organs are actually bathed inside this hemolymph only and except the uh, gonads and whereas this entire the body cavity is uh, provided with the uh, con or contains many large uh, number or the large sized number of the fat bodies are present and the whitish masses like structures which are present in the entire the body uh, cavity and they are called fat bodies and fat bodies in cockroach are also called corpora adiposa. So fat bodies in cockroach are called corpora adiposa and this corpora adiposa is made up of the several different types of the cells are present and actually there are at about the four different types of the cells are present. The one kind of the cells uh, are which are responsible for the uh, which are responsible for the storage of the excess amount of the food materials and those are called trophocytes and whose function is to store uh, the glycogen and also the proteins and fats and there is an uh, other type of the cells are also present which are called mycetocytes and which actually contain the symbiotic bacteria are present inside the mycetocytes and there are the uh, another kind of the uh, uh, cells are present which are called uh, urate cells and which are responsible for the storage of uh, uric acid and which helps in the storage excretion and, and there is an another kind of the cells called enocytes and these enocytes are responsible for the synthesis as well as the storage of the fats and like this the fat bodies are actually made up of four different types of the cells and so uh, uh, previously in earthworm also we studied and the chlorogogen cells of the earthworm which helps in excretion are comparable to the liver of vertebrates and in the same manner the fat bodies of the cockroach are also comparable to the liver of vertebrates based on their uh, uh, certain functions they show the similarity so in that aspect so uh, in that aspect they are similar they are regarded to the similar to the liver of vertebrates and so this is the, about the body cavity and the, uh, some of the fat bodies that are uh, present inside the body of cavity of the cockroach and coming to the uh, physiological aspects and so of the all the systems that are present and so uh, the among them the first one is actually the digestive system and digestive system of the cockroach and uh, it's uh, consist of as you know that cockroach is omnivorous in nature and uh, it feeds on all the kinds of the food materials and so uh, omnivorous in nature and it feeds on almost all the kinds of the food materials a well developed digestive system is present in cockroach and digestive system actually comprises of elementary canal and the associated digestive glands and, and before that actually uh, in the head of the cockroach and there is a small uh, a space is present which is actually surrounded by these mouth parts and 
and that we call it as preoral cavity into which the hypopharynx is actually hangs on. So this preoral cavity divided uh, this uh, hypopharynx into two regions and that is the dorsal and anterior sibarium and the ventral one is called the salivarium and, and this preoral cavity actually opens into the mouth and which is the first part of the elementary canal and so elementary canal starts with the mouth and ends with the anus and it is a very long tubular and also get folded and, and it is actually measures about the more than the length of the body and, and so that it is actually folded at some uh, places and or it get coiled at the some uh, places and, and so uh, this elementary canal in, in a cockroach is actually get divided into the three regions and foregut, midgut and hindgut and foregut is also called the stomodium, midgut is also called the mesenteron and hindgut is also called the proctodium and so the coming to the uh, foregut or the stomodium it is mainly concerned with the insertion of the food materials and, and also the it, it, it helps in the storage and it also helps in the uh, grinding of food materials and so ingestion and uh, uh, storage and the grinding and these are the three main functions of the foregut and coming to the midgut or the mesenteron and midgut actually the uh, it's a major site for the secretion of the digestive enzymes so it helps in digestion and it also helps in the absorption of the food materials and so these are the two uh, main functions that are performed by this uh, midgut and second part is uh, the third part is actually the hindgut which is also called the proctorium and that mainly helps in absorption of the water and various types of the minerals from the undigested uh, food materials and so uh, in that way uh, the three are the three different parts of the uh, digestive system uh, are the elementary canal helps in the uh, in different performance of the different functions and now the both the foregut and the hindgut and they are uh, line, internally lined by the ectodermal lining whereas midgut is aligned by the endodermal lining and so uh, ectodermal lining is present in the internally in the foregut and hindgut endodermal lining is found in case of the uh, midgut and coming to the first part that is a foregut or the stomodium and which gets starts with the mouth and it is present inside the head and the preoral cavity actually leads into the mouth and it's a small cavity and mouth in turn leads into the short a tubular structure called the pharynx and the pharynx in turn get leads into a narrow long tubular structure called esophagus and like this and so the mouth mouth leads into the pharynx short tubular structure and which in turn leads into a long narrow tubular structure called the esophagus and so the esophagus actually passes through the nerve ring and which is actually present inside the head and it actually passes through the uh, uh, nerve uh, ring and and uh, finally it enters it passes through the uh, head neck and also enters into the thoracic region where it opens into uh, uh, esophagus passing through the neck and the nerve ring and uh, entering into the thoracic cavity where it finally leads into a thin walled and the distensible sac like structure called crop and so crop is a, a thin walled distensible sac like a structure and, and which serves as a, a reservoir of the food materials and and the crop in turn get leads into the next part called the gizzard which is also called the proventriculus and so crop leads into the gizzard or the proventriculus and and it has got an outer a thick layer of the circular muscles are present and if you cut the TS it is provided with an outer thick layer of the circular muscles are present like this and so entire the gizzard is provided with the outer thick layer of the circular muscles are present and inside that one and another thick layer of the cuticle is present and, and this cuticle actually get provided uh, inner layer of the cuticle and it uh, forms into a six chitinous a uh, plate like structures are formed and so like this there are the six chitinous plate like structures are present and towards the inner side and uh, so it forms into the six cuticular uh, plates and so this in between this cuticular plates and you will find the grooves are a present and these grooves are a present and, and below this one if you this is the ts of this one if you cut the ls part of that one this is uh, a uh, crop uh, like this you have got in ls and the gizzard 
and this gizzard is provided with the six uh, chitinous plate like structures is present this is a chitin and below this one you have got a cuticular pad like extension is seen on so this cuticular pad like extension is also provided with backwardly directed chitinous bristles are present and backwardly directed chitinous bristles are present and below that one so this backwardly directed chitinous bristles and that are present inside this uh, gizzard below the uh, attached to this cuticular pads and they actually helps in straining and so uh, they actually helps in the uh, our functions as a strainers and allow only the filtration of food particles to get pass into the mid gut and so they are uh, uh, functions as strainers and and the posterior end of the gizzard and, and the, the, this posterior end of the gizzard which is in turn get extends into the mid gut and so uh, this uh, actually get extends into the mid gut as an inward folding like structures and so they are uh, inner wall of this gizzard and they get extended and into the mid gut and so uh, into the uh, they extend into the mid gut as a spout like structures and and these uh, uh, spout like uh, structures and are called stomodial wall one these spout like structures which are formed from the extensions of these uh, extensions of the inner wall of this gizzard are called as stomodial wall one the function of the stomodial wall is to prevent the regurgitation of the food materials from the mesenteron uh, from the mesenteron or midgut into the uh, foregut and uh, or into the gizzard and entum. so all these parts actually constitute to form the foregut and that is mouth pharynx esophagus and the uh, crop and gizzard and coming to the midgut are the mesenteron and the midgut is actually uh, also called the ventriculus and, and uh, along with that it is also provided with the hepatic ck are also present and a ring of a ring of, uh, uh, here a, a ring of 6 to 8 blind tubular structures are present which are called hepatic ck or the gastric ck are present and which are located exactly at the junction of foregut and midgut and so these 6 to 8 blind tubular structures and that exactly present at the junction of the foregut and midgut and which are actually formed from the uh, midgut only and they are lined by the endoderm and, and which arises from the anterior end of the mesenteron only and, and they are called hepatic ck or gastric ck and and the finally uh, they uh, the coming to the uh, the mesenteron the whatever the midgut or the mesenteron are which also called the ventriculus and which is get actually divided into the two parts and the anterior and the posterior part the anterior part of the ventriculus uh, it is actually secretory in function and helps in secretion of various kinds of the digestive enzymes and, and it is also responsible for the formation of a peritrophic membrane and around the uh, food and, and also secretes the various kinds of the enzymes and like the proteases amylases and lipases they all are uh, also get secreted and whereas the posterior part of the midgut and it is actually the absorptive in function and in that way the anterior is secretory and the posterior is actually the absorptive in functions and coming to the uh, next part of the elementary canal that what we call it as the hindgut and which is also called the proctodium and the hindgut is actually slightly broader and and it's a, it's a slightly opens uh, hindgut is actually divided into the uh, three parts and anterior called ilium and the middle one is called column posteriorly the rectum and ilium is a very short narrow tubular structure which in turn opens into the uh, a long a, a long slightly coiled portion of that part called the colon and, and whereas the colon in turn get leads into the a broad uh, sac like structure and a larger a little bit wider a uh, sac like structure called the rectum and finally the rectum opens outside uh, 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 outside in the form of an opening called anus and that is present below the 10th tergal a plate and now uh, coming at the junction of the midgut and the hindgut there are the several number of the bundles of the six to eight bundles of yellowish light yellowish colored 
uh, tubules are present and, and those are filamentous and almost 100 to 150 in number and, and they are arranged in the six bundles and, and the, which also get opens into the uh, ileum part and they are called Malphigian tubules and even though they are structurally get attached to that but they are not uh, functionally associated and because uh, the entire the whole part of the elementary canal helps in digestion but these uh, tubules and yellow tubules and uh, which are arranged in six bundles they are called Malphigian tubules and these Malphigian tubules are actually excretory in function and, and uh, they extract the wastes and they uh, 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 discharge their waste into this elementary uh, canal and and the ileum also collects the uric acid uh, from coming from these um, uh, coming from these Malphigian tubules and it also uh, uh, receives the undigested food materials that enters from the mid gut and also enters into here. And now uh, another thing is the inner surface of the rectum and the inner surface of the rectum provided with the longitudinal foldings and which are again also the 6 to, six to 8 longitudinal foldings are present inside the rectum and those are called rectal papillae or the rectal uh, pads and that helps in the absorption of the water from the undigested food materials and so this is all about the uh, whole uh, elementary canal and, and the second part of the elementary canal is that uh, the digestive glands and so uh, cockroach also provide with the uh, digestive glands and which are the uh, the which produces the digestive enzymes and they are the salivary glands which produces the saliva glands that are associated with the mesentron at the anterior part secretes the different types of digestive enzymes hepatic ck also helps in the production of the digestive enzymes and so among them the first one actually the salivary glands a pair of large salivary glands are present which are located on the uh, either side of the esophagus and, and these salivary glands are provided with an, a large reservoir or the receptacle is present for the temporary storage of the saliva and on either side of that one a pair of low black structures are present they are the uh, salivary, uh, salivary uh, glands and so these two low black structure along with the salivary reservoir constitute to form the one salivary ductant and these uh, salivary glands actually secretes the saliva that mainly constitute of salivary amylase so amylase that helps in the digestion of carbohydrates and so from uh, again all these ducts and the reservoir duct and the salivary, the glandular duct they all are united and finally forms into an efferent salivary duct and this efferent salivary duct in turn opens at the base of hypopharynx and so these salivary glands uh, uh, helps in the production of the saliva and the main constituent of the saliva is the salivary amylase and this helps in the digestion of the carbohydrates and so uh, and another uh, digestive glands that are present in the hepatic ck also helps in the secretion of the different digestive enzymes but the main part of the uh, uh, secretory part is the the anterior secretory part of the mesentron which we already studied and which secretes the all the different kinds of the digestive enzymes like proteases amylases lipases they all are actually get produced from that and major part of the food is actually get digested with the help of these enzymes and so uh, the digestive glands and along with the elementary canal that we studied so far all this constitute to form the uh, digestive system of cockroach and so uh, coming to the uh, next part of the uh, next uh, system and that present in case of the cockroach and is the respiratory uh, system and the respiratory system uh, in case of the cockroach and it is provided with a several number of white silvery uh, uh, chitinous tubules are present and which are called the trachea and so uh, all this trachea constitute to form the tracheal system and so the respiratory system of cockroach is actually called as tracheal system and, and as the blood of the cockroach is not provided with the pigment and inside this so as the pigment is actually not present and it is in, uh, as the pigment is absent inside the blood of the cockroach the blood do not serve in the transport of the gases so uh, the tracheal system is actually developed and, and which are responsible for the di directly taking off these respiratory gases from the uh, external surface of the body towards the each and every cell or the tissues that are present inside the uh, inside the body so there are the fine tubular structures and called uh, tubular structures and called trachea which spread uh, in the entire the body and that takes the oxygen directly to the uh, sites of 
uh, uh, directly to the sites of where the oxygen is actually get utilized. And so, tracheal system of cockroach is actually uh, constituted formed by the three parts and one is the spiracles, second one is the trachea and the one is the tracheoles. And so, among them the first one is actually the spiracles and that are present on the uh, lateral sides of the body in the thoracic region as well as in the abdominal region. And so, there are at about uh, 10 pairs of the spiracles are present and, and the, all the 10 pairs of the spiracles in case of the cockroach are functional and which are also called as stigmata. And so, the, the out of the 10 pairs, one pair is actually present on the mesothorax, another pair is present on the metathorax, so, so the first two pairs. So, totally two pairs are present in the thoracic region and on the ventral side uh, uh, on the abdominal region, there are at about the 8 pairs of the spiracles are present. And so, each spiracle uh, uh, like this and so, so they are present exactly on the pleurite and uh, like this dorsal tergum and ventral sternal plates are present. These spiracles are actually situated on the pleurites and each spiracle and uh, the, it is also called the stigma is internally leached into a, a short chamber like structure and called the atrium and so like this the spiracle is present and the spiracle is surrounded by an annular scleroid which is called the peritreme and which uh, is provided with a chitinous bristle like structures are present and that leads into they are also provided with the walls and that leads into a small chamber called the atrium. So, uh, the spiracles, spiracle leads internally into a short chamber called the atrium or the tracheal chamber. So, from this atrium the tracheal tubes actually get arranged in this manner. So, all the spiracles uh, in case of the cockroach are actually the valves are present and uh, they are called valvular and each of them uh, as you got uh, as I told you they are provided with the valves and each spiracle is surrounded by the chitinous clearite called the peritreme is actually present and, and the small hair like structures and that are present and these small hair like structures are called trichomes and Aries get entered, uh, Aries actually get taken inside, they are actually get filtered by this trichomes. And so, uh, from the each atrium and several number of the horizontal trachea actually get arranged and from each trachea, several number of the horizontal trachea run from each side and from the both sides they are actually get arranged. And so, the branches from the, these, uh, these uh, again these horizontal trachea get divided into the several number of branches and, and Especially when it comes to the thoracic region, thus each spiracle get opens into the several number of horizontal trachea. These horizontal trachea again get divided into the several number of branches and these branches get enter into the all the organs of the body and especially the, uh, the head region and the thoracic region and the abdominal region. And so, these trachea uh, in turn get divides into the profusely uh, in divided into the several number of branches and these branches get enter into the almost all the parts of the body and so the tracheal uh, tubes and which are actually getting entering into the uh, before they get entering into the organs or the tissues they actually enter into the uh, uh, finally get end in an a tracheolar a cell and uh, the finally they get end in the a tracheolar cell is actually present and, and uh, these from this tracheolar cell uh, the trachea are uh, finally leads into the several number of branches and they are called tracheoles and that is why the tracheoles are actually called uh, intracellular tubules and so trachea finally get divided into the several number of branches profusely and they finally end in the tracheolar cell from the tracheolar cell again they uh, forms into the fine branches which are called tracheoles and, and this trachea actually uh, constitute to formed by the three layers and as we already studied the body wall, uh, body wall has got the three layers outer cuticle, middle uh, epidermis, inner basement membrane. So, the same layers are also present in case of the trachea, but they are uh, in, in opposite direction. And that is actually trachea are regarded as formed uh, regarded in one way that they are actually formed by the invagination of body wall. And so, whatever the layers that are present in the body wall, same layers are present. And but in in, in in reverse direction and that is basement membrane is present towards the outer side epithelial epidermis uh, it is epithelial layer is present outside the outer cuticular lining comes to the inner side and so that inner layer of cuticle what we call it as intima so if you cut the uh, this one there are the three layers are actually present and 
the outer one is the basement membrane and the inner layer is the almost the epidermis or which is the epithelial lining is present this inner cuticular uh, layer and we call it as intiman so like this the three layers are present and so there the outer cuticular layer is present uh, in body wall as outside basement membrane is actually present inside and so this intima forms into the inward uh, circular thickenings are forms and so this tinidia actually forms into the spiral thickenings and so the spiral thickenings formed by this intima layer and they are called tinidia and so uh, like this you have got the spiral thickenings are present in the tracheal wall and they are called the tinidia so this tinidia uh, which prevents the collapsing of the trachea so uh, whenever the air is get passing through and through them they prevent the from the collapsing and then second uh, uh, part is that tracheoles and so the terminal cell of the the terminal cell of the trachea is called tracheoblast or the tracheolar cell and so these tracheolar cells are responsible for giving rise to these tracheoles that's why they are intracellular and so they are nothing but the tubular extensions of one so the tubular extensions of this tracheolar cell and are of the are tracheolar cell are the tracheoblast and so these tracheoles finally reach into the or end into the cells and, and they are intimately associated with the mitochondria uh, where actually the cellular respiration occurs and so these tracheoles finally enter into the cells end in the cells and and inside the cells where the mitochondria are present near to them these tracheoles are cells actually get ends and and these tracheoles are without the intima layer and uh, which is present in case of the uh, trachea uh, as a result of the absence of the intima layer there is there are no tinidia are also absent and but in addition to that uh, uh, in absence of that one there is an another layer is actually present in case of the tracheolar like this the basement membrane epithelial lining is common and both the trachea as well as the tracheolar but intima layer is absent so tinidia are also absent but internally it is lined by a proteinaceous layer and that is uh, this proteinaceous uh, uh, made up of trachein and so a trachein proteinaceous layer is present inside that one and it forms and and as the tracheoles actually get enter inside the cells and the tissues and so whatever the cellular fluid that is present it get enters into the tracheoles and so as that cellular fluid that enters into these tracheoles and so that the fluid also due to the capillary action the cellular fluid enters into the tracheoles now we call this as tracheolar fluid and, and the level of this tracheolar fluid that is present inside them is actually more and less and depending upon the activity of the cockroach and suppose if the insect is actually inactive and it is more and the level is actually more and, and if the insect is actually uh, uh, if the insect is actually the uh, uh, inactive the level of the tracheolar fluid is more inside this tracheoles if the insect is actually active the tracheolar fluid is again get absorbed into the uh, cells and so where the level of the fluid get falls and so raise and lowering and so raise of the tracheolar fluid uh, is seen inside the tracheoles when the cockroach is actually inactive and, and the falling of the tracheolar fluid is seen when the cockroach is actually active and now uh, in case of the cockroach there are the in order to perform this uh, respiratory activities there are the two types of the muscles are present and that is uh, dorsoventral muscles and ventral longitudinal muscles and so like the uh, this is the tergal plate and the ventral plate is present the muscles that are extended in between the dorsal tergal plate and the ventral tergal plate they are called dorsoventral muscles or tergosternal muscles and there are the other muscles that are present in case of the cockroach and that are ventro longitudinal muscles and which are present on ventral side and the longitudinal end so these ventro longitudinal muscles and the uh, dorso long uh, dorso ventral muscles these two are responsible for the uh, making the uh, respiratory movements possible and but out of that dorso ventral muscles are the principal respiratory muscles and so which helps in uh, both inspiration as well as the expiration and so inspiration and expiration are made possible with the help of these two kinds of the muscles